Hello, U.S. History class. Today is Tuesday. Today we are going to be reading um, more about the culture of the 1920s. Some of this will be some review from things we've done in the past that's kind of come back up and some of it's not. So let's start on page here. Four fifty-two. So some things start changing during this time period. We saw where um, women um, became stronger during World War One as they went outside and gardened and did things that typically during that time period kind of men did. Women started doing those things, and now we see that um, inventions are created, such as there was the washing machine, the dryer, the refrigerator, the blender. Things like that that took that typically women would have had to spend their time doing, but now they, they don't have to spend those time doing those things. They can spend their time doing other things, so it kind of freed them up a little bit. And um, there was this big push towards from moral relativism that people were actually getting divorced. Um, the population tripled, but the divorce rate quadrupled, so it went up by four. That's a lot. Um, I'm actually going to move this. You might be able to see me a little bit better if that's not in the way there. Um, yeah, that's a little bit better, isn't it? I'll be able to see me a little bit better. I'll not be in the dark as much. Um, and so if you keep looking, this, there's this big push. You're going to see this big push towards scandals and liking scandals. And, and to be honest, that's something that is still big and popular in America, but it really started with this. Like, everybody likes the idea of a scandal. And... So you're gonna see there's kind of heroes and villains in this. Um, we're gonna start with the heroes today and tomorrow we'll go to the villain side. So, if you keep flipping here, this is when we start to get into some of the things though that we um, really think about when we think of the Roaring Twenties, a flapper girl. And what did they wear? These trends started starting with the big furry coats and dancing and dance competitions. I love jazz. Um, I took jazz as a kid and um, actually all the way up until high school I did jazz dancing and I loved it. Um, and so this is something that I really enjoy on my own even. Uh, but this is kind of when that started. They didn't dance like that until until this point. Um, You'll see on the next thing there. So a lot of um, entertainment started coming about about daily newspapers, seeing so down reading the newspapers, radio, even movies. So in and a, a big thing that people started going to before, if you think about before what people went to during the colonial times, their entertainment was um, they went to those the well, the barn and like hay hay gatherings where they would and knitting classes where or knitting groups where everybody come and kind of do knitting in churches were kind of um, social gatherings back then. That's where people went to gather socially if they've not gathered with anybody. That's where they would go gather. And now it's more people are going to like sporting events and jazz competitions. So it's kind of becoming a little bit more of this entertainment. We need to be entertained. Um, thing that we see here in America now that we talk about all the time in American culture is, oh, we need to be entertained, we need to be entertained. And that is just where it started was in the 1920s. I'm trying to move this light. I know it looks really dark in here. And my hair looks red, but I promise it's not. Anyway, so some of the names that you probably recognize from the sports side would be like Babe Ruth. Um, and from the movie side, Charlie Chaplin, he, they did silent films where they just kind of did funny stuff and made people laugh. Um, an American's air ambassador, so if you look at the very top of 453 here, Charles A. Lindbergh, and he was trying to become the first person to fly solo around the Atlantic Ocean. And so um, he was called the Spirit of St. Louis. And I remember um, having to read about him when I was in school. And he was, a, remember, aircraft and airplanes have just been made, so this is a big deal to people still. Now we take flights and we don't think anything about it. Um, American pride has become a big deal and um, prejudice, though, starts to come, kind of make a comeback. So if you think back to when we studied about the Ku Klux Klan, we studied them before we left from school. And if you think back to them, they kind of died away for a little while and now they're making a comeback. 
and it's not like it was before so we're gonna get to that point but there was actually a big influx of immigration I think over 9 million um, immigrants came to America from the time of 19 10 to 19 um, 19 or 1900 to 19 10 I mean, it just keeps growing from there. We call America the melting pot for that reason. Nobody is truly American besides Native Americans, but the rest of us have some form of, um, you've probably seen it on Snapchat or Instagram where people now have been holding up their faces and there's this like um, filter where you can see how much of different ethnicities you are. I don't know how accurate that is, but I've been seeing that go around a lot and that's because everybody in America is made up of different ethnicities where we just all are. Um, so a big thing that starts happening though that you, you probably have heard about living in the South, um, it's a reality in, in our culture especially, but there is a big, um, people tend to view immigrants as, as um, can be dangerous and because and it started with the Red Scare that we talked about last week where they were putting bombs in random places and at that point we didn't know who it was. Now we do. It was an immigrant. And so that really made people associate immigration and immigrants with violence. And now there, there is a large um, violence, um, violent and like murders and drug trafficking in different ethnic populations that come in here from the United States, different immigrants. Um, that is true, not, um, there is a high, um, a high crime rate with certain, um, like basically more with illegal immigration than, than legal, legal, legal immigration, I can't the word out. Um, but, the, that, that prejudice from thinking that just, oh, you're part of the certain people group, you must be violent, came from, from stem from that. And it kind of continued, but um, people that, and another big trend was people from, that were African American were moving from the South where they had been brought here as slaves and just kind of stayed through generations. They were moving North and just like, I mean, they had moved North before to find jobs because there, there was more jobs there. There was more um, freedom for them there. But there was just a big influx of African Americans moving from there to northern urban areas during this time. And so something that was really created in New York, if you've ever heard of Harlem, the Harlem Globe Trotters will be something I'm going to send you guys about. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget um, on here. They're like really cool to see if you've never seen them before. So I'll try to find a video of them. Um, but Harlem is an area that's it was mainly a black community, and it was in in, in New York, and it was mainly lower income black. Um, it was a lower income black community, and so something that 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 was created there. But a lot of things in their own entertainment of black culture came out was like in jazz music. And um, Louis Armstrong um, came to to be a famous name. And then the Ku Klux Klan makes a comeback. And obviously they were bad enough before, and it just gets worse. Um, so basically now they kind of have this revival of the KKK. And instead of just saying, okay, we're against, we're white and then against black men, that's bad enough on its own. They decide they're going to make it a religious movement. And I talked to you about that before, that it was kind of seen as, a, they called it a religious movement. Um, these people, you had to be, what they considered, um, it promoted 100% Americanism, which is not even really a thing. Um, and it also, you had to be a Protestant, and you had to be born in America, and you had to be a white man to be a part of this new group. And they started pegging more people than just the African American community. They started pegging Roman Catholics, Jews, um, bootleggers, which is people that are in the speakeasies, um, women abusers so like some of the things that they were like trying to battle were not necessarily bad things like people that beat women obviously we want somebody to go stand up for for that and to, to knock that down but not in the way that they were doing it obviously two wrongs never make a right but they were using the cross as their symbol because they said it was a moral movement so that's interesting that they believe that that's just one um 
you know, one time that uh, people start using, putting, you know, saying, oh God told me to do something that was not in the Bible, so that's not good. But that's all I have for you guys today, and then tomorrow we'll go through the villains of, that we're starting on the villains of um, the, the Roaring Twenties, and tomorrow we'll go through some of the monsters that you've probably heard about.